colleagues. Um, it's a privilege to be here and be with you this morning. Um, today, I'm going to be discussing um, developing and implementing a robust cybersecurity strategy. A lot of the times we've been talking about implementing security solutions, taking security measures, um, but at the crux of it, I think it's important as security practitioners, as leaders in organizations, um, to make sure that we have a plan, we have a strategy that fits in into the organization. Uh, just a bit of humor. I think if security was this simple, then our job will be done. So we'll cover why do organizations need to implement robust cybersecurity strategies. And uh, given the digitalization and the evolving threat landscape, how do you prioritize your focus areas? And then how can organizations know that the strategy is working, that they've invested, and also that they've invested enough in, in security? So if you look at, um, uh, you know, where the world is going right now, there's massive, massive digital transformation that's taking place. Customers are more and more demanding, um, you know, to transact fully and securely online everywhere around the world. And cybersecurity approaches and defenses, uh, we have to be agile uh, along with the agile development. You can see all organizations right now, they are adopting agile development of solutions, of products and product launches. And then as security practitioners or as security, we need to make sure that our security is built <coughs> into the, the business pipeline. There was a time in my career where I wanted to move away from, from security. I come from a technical background. Um, and I wanted to start talking business. I wanted to sit at the table with business decision makers um, because, you know, security was always in IT somewhere in the corner. But then quick fast, fast forward that, right now security is a business imperative. Especially now because everybody's talking digital. You know, somebody the other day were having a discussion around we're using the words digitization and digitalization interchangeably, but there's a difference uh, between those two. But I guess security applies irrespective because digitization is, you know, transforming your physical data or physical information into digital form. Digitalization is actually using technology to transform your business operations. So either way, security plays a critical part in all of that. And uh, just to, 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 to emphasize on the, on the fact that uh, I'm saying security is now a business imperative. If you take an example of, um, let's say, bungee jumping activity, right? Um, when you go there to do bungee jumping, when you get there, they put, uh, you know, safety gear on you, the helmet and everything. They even show you how to land all of that. Uh, in your opinion, does that reduce the risk of bungee jumping or that actually enables bungee jumping? Anyone? It enables it. Or actually, security is, that safety is the bungee jumping. Because without it, there won't be that activity. So that's how critical, um, you know, security has become. If you're going and, or, and launching online services, if they are not secure, you're not going to have an online sec service. So how many of you, when you go into a shop to buy a cell phone, you decide that, oh, hello, I want the, the cell phone with the best security features. How many of you is your number one priority? Really? You go there, you don't say you want an iPhone with the best features that can do this or an Android. It's because why? Security is inherent. You are assuming that security must be in there. So our job as security practitioners is to maintain that reality, maintain that real for our customers. So security really, really, uh, I'm glad that it has now, you know, become part of the decisions, part of the business decisions going forward. So as the organization's going digital, we need to make sure that uh, we evolve our practices as well. We don't want to be the bottleneck. Now that everybody knows security is important in uh, everyday business, we need to make sure that we also evolve how we do things um, as practitioners without being bottlenecks. So another reason also why you will need to invest in robust cybersecurity strategies, if you look now, the, there's a convergence of 5G, IoT, AI, um, and while that brings about, you know, 
uh, connectivity and benefits for both devices and, and machines, you know, with uh, convenient broadband at fast speeds, they can actually, you know, become a, a you know, a paradigm shift in, 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 you know, cyber attacks. If you look at the speeds at which uh, attacker can exfiltrate uh, companies' data, those speeds are exponential. And also 5G with the advances in AI, they can also be a perfect incubator um, for, you know, development of SOM-based attacks. I mean, can you imagine the efficiency of such attacks where, you know, thousands of hijacked devices or IoT devices, you know, are operating as an integrated unit and they are sharing threat intel in real life as they are, as they are attacking you. They can revise and refine their attack uh, with, uh, with real life data. So it's, it's, it's really, we are moving into an, into an era where you know, they, they we cannot keep up with advances in, uh, in, um, in cyber security. So again, also, if you look at the advances in AI as well, um, they can be used to, f to launch phishing attacks. And now we are seeing more and more deep fake being adopted for social engineering against organizations. So, so again, also, increasing efficiency of cyber criminals. So cyber criminals, uh, they don't have governance processes when they decide to, to launch an attack. Um, and again, also the fact that the, the dark web is becoming a, you know, a black market where criminals of all sorts obtain different malicious capabilities to launch against organizations. Uh, we, 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 we as organizations are always playing catch up because by the time you are requesting a budget and then it gets approved, then you issue a tender, then you appoint a supplier, then you fight with your IT colleagues for them to give you a change slot. Uh, the attacker has already moved on. They've done what they need to do, they've moved on to another um, target. So I'm not saying governance is not important, it is important, but it's just the efficiency of how we can, as an organization, also support your security functions in executing some of these things so that we can have agile internal processes so that we launch these things because we are always playing catch up. And then geopolitics, it's been mentioned many times from yesterday that uh, the geopolitical landscape, it involves now the use of technology to spy on each other as governments, as organizations, uh, to launch different cyber attacks and espionage. And more governments now are compelled to create dedicated capabilities or institutions that can drive national cyber security agendas. We've seen now with the AFRIPOL uh, uh, and so forth, and the different, um, you know, um, organizational institutions that the colleagues have mentioned also. And also what we are seeing is the credit rating agencies, insurers and governments out there, they've started assessing the cybersecurity posture of organizations as part of their, you know, assessing the overall health of, a, of an organization. And again also, like I was mentioning, the security, uh, the threats, they have become so sophisticated and we find ourselves playing catch up. Now, where do you start? We understand the organizations know that we need to prioritize security, we need to invest in security, um, but then where do you start? Because we know for sure that we cannot find a panacea to remove the threats, they'll always be there. But then how do you prioritize? So um, the approach that I've seen works um, in various organizations or in the industry, and this is some of the approaches I've also um, adopted. You need to understand the drivers for your organization for security. We know globally out there, there's threats, you know, we get the data, but you need to understand as your own business that you are in, as your own organization that you're working in, um, what, is the, what drives security. Some organizations, we find that they've had so many attacks or so many incidents, and they say, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Siso, our priority is to reduce the number of incidents. Then you already know that what does your business need. So when you craft your security plan or security strategy, you already now know where you, the, your prioritization needs to focus on. And that's not the only thing. Other companies, you find they are more compliance-based. There was a question on compliance yesterday. I worked in one of the other organizations where compliance was the key, not just compliance to security, but compliance everywhere. Uh, so then it made my life a lot easier because 
you adopt a security um, approach that says thou shall. So when they know that now we are rolling out D DLP, it's not a matter of, hey, you know, we want to help you, we want to safeguard, it's a matter of thou shall implement DLP to comply with that legislative or regulation for organization, boom, that's it. Everybody knows that that's what they need to do. So you need to understand the tone of your organization when you implementing the different solutions. Another organization, you find that they have the basics. They have the, you know, the basic security measures, but then uh, they are now digitalizing. So now you know that your focus is business enablement. So you know that you have to focus a lot of your efforts on your application security, your cloud, your container uh, security, your API. So you know that, you know what, the focus area is around this area because now you are mostly on business enablement and then you can decide that while I'm you know, enabling the business through their product development, I need to also beef up on my cyber resilience capabilities so that anything that happens, you know, you are able to have the two, the two together. And then uh, there was another organization also where um, security was, they know it's important, but um, they actually not, they don't have time for it because they're chasing deadlines, they're chasing trading platforms, two milliseconds, um, you know, latency. So if you go to them and say you want to, IT operations want to roll out patches, they don't have time. Make sure that that system is not down by two minutes because you are dead. So then you need to understand what is important for your business and understand how you can work with your colleagues. Because remember, as security practitioners, we're in partnership with our IT colleagues. So you need to create that synergy between your IT colleagues so that you can enable your business. So you need, in, in a scenario like that, then you need to say from a security, my plan, then it means I need to focus on walking the corridors, soften people up so that they understand why I need to do certain things, try and buy some time from them to say, can we have some thresholds then at least, if such scenario is understood. So you, so you, you adapt as, as the organization really will tell you, you can influence how they do things, but it's a, you know, you have to have a, a combination of the two. And then others, of course, budgets. How many of you have got unlimited budget for security? Wow, I wish to be in your shoes. Unlimited budget, I've never, I've never had an experience like that. So you are very, very privileged, my brother. Um, so, so again, so hence I'm saying that you're understanding the context. So once you understand the context and the business, you have established what are the business drivers for security for your organization, then you need to understand what are their strategic objectives. Security cannot happen in a vacuum. So what are the, security, the, the organizational strategic objectives? Uh, you know, we say, they say they want to digitalize, but what? What does that digitalization mean? And what does it mean for security? And then you need to understand also information security and the specific business units uh, priorities. Because everybody's got their priorities also. You need to make sure that security becomes part uh, of enabling those priorities. And then when you've done that also, you need to, understand, to assess the current and emerging risks and threats. Uh, risks in your industry, risks in your, you know, in your organization and the threats. And review also the audit findings that audit finds also they give you a lot of understanding as to where are the loopholes. So you need to understand the threat and the risk landscape for your organization and you factor that into your security plan. And then you understand the data protection and regulator requirements they've been talking up, they, they were talked about this morning. So what does the data protection legislation require of organizations? There's lots of regulations, also, especially in the banking sector as well. So you need to take those into consideration when you are taking a plan. Can you imagine, it's not, like I'm saying, it's not an easy thing to say, okay, everybody is doing SIM, uh, everybody is doing SOA, everybody is doing um, PEM. You need to take all of these into consideration. And now you also need to uh, utilize the industry best practices. We have lots of them, ISO, NIST, you need to, from all of them, because if you look at all of them, most of them, they are asking for the same things. It's just different terminology. But all of them, um, they are about the same thing, and I'll, I'll show you later on. Then uh, use them as your guide in terms of how you can, you can structure 
uh, your, your plan and how you want to, to focus the area. And of course, you need to assess your security capabilities. Now that you have this all this intel, you know what your business wants, you understand the tone of your organization, you understand the IT plan, you understand the risk, you understand the threats, you understand the, the regulatory requirements, you know, you've reviewed the best practice. Then you need to now say, okay, as uh, my organization, what is my current security capability in relation to addressing all of these things? And of course, you need to develop a framework that can help you to do that assessment of your own capabilities against that. And then of course, that will then drive your security strategy to say, okay, now how do I, how do I then put this thing together? And from, you know, from everything that I have worked with, um, and understanding security is really for me about these four things. What we are working towards as security is these four things. Our ability to protect and prevent uh, cyber incidents for organization, our ability to monitor and detect um, adversaries in our organization, how quickly are we to detect um, you know, if there's an adversary. And then our response and recovery uh, our capabilities. When an incident happens, somebody also mentioned yesterday that not if an incident happens, when it happens, how quickly are you able to respond and recover and bring your business back to its operations? And of course, all of this is underpinned by sound, sound governance uh, processes, risk and awareness. So, so it's, it's really around making sure that there's policy, strategy, you know, risk management, compliance. So that's that another layer. So your, your plan, because once you do this, then you'll be able to see where your issues are. And the business can be able to support you to say, look, I think we are very weak on our response and recovery. Maybe let's put money more on our response and recovery capabilities or maybe on protect, our protect and prevention capabilities. Or you know what, we actually need to invest in all of them because we are now digitalizing 120% full steam. So this at least helps you and gives you a, 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 a blueprint for you to, to put your plan together. Okay, so some of the considerations that you need to put in your security strategy, uh, of course, we, it needs to be very clear to the leadership because right now security reports to the board. So the, most of the board members, they don't necessarily understand security. So you have to break it down for them to understand so that they can support you fully. So you don't go there with big terminology. You need to be, make it very clear to say, what are you solving for? Who cares, you know, if there's a, you know, the global threat landscape is, is looking gloomy or, you know, so-and-so has been attacked. We've seen so many um, organizations that were shown here that have been attacked. Um, and then somebody will say, but my organization has never been hacked, so why should I care? So that's where then you need to capture your leadership, your organization business so that they can support you. Then that's where you outline your, your problem statement. And then of course, you need to provide the business context. So you need to show them um, where security fits in into your business. Make it their problem. You outline very clearly that here's the business demand for security the demand that you have given me. So this is now how I'm gonna meet your demand. Then it, you be, it, make, it becomes their, their strategy, it becomes their plan. It, security then becomes, uh, is, you know, it becomes a, an integral part of, of their decision making and what they do. And then of course, okay, fine. So now you've you outlined what you're solving for. You say this is where security fits in. This is what you want me to do. Now you're saying this is how I'm going to do it. This is my response plan to, you know, to the, to the problem statement that I've outlined. And then you need to outline very clearly your execution plan. Um, you need to also outline the, you know, what you will need even to execute on that plan. You know, you need additional resources and then you need to demonstrate. You need to be very clear around demonstrating what you need the resources to do, the funding, you need agile governance process I was talking about, you need the leadership, but it, it needs to be very, very well articulated. And then of course, importantly, measurement. How are they gonna measure you? How are they gonna measure your strategy that you have actually delivered or you are actually delivering? And you need to be bold and make commitments 
uh, to, the, to, to your business. And of course, money talks, but you can never spend enough on security, okay? You need to make sure that, uh, how do I do that? You need to make sure that uh, you show the full cost of your program, because at least they know that to secure this organization, we need X. But then when they look at the gains that they get from going digital, security becomes a minute thing. Unless, of course, the cost of securing the digital platforms outweighs the actual gains that you get from it, which hardly, hardly ever happens, then you are able to win an argument on, on getting the budget that you're looking for to, to, um, to get your strategy going. So really, really demonstrating value for security in conclusion, um, three things. Use the aforementioned approach to identify the key areas that need focus. A healthy cybersecurity budget uh, should make up according to the industry and also look at, based on my experience, anything between nine and 14% of your IT budget or your transformation budget. Um, and, but then in reality, we're seeing that organizations are really, really spending less. Okay, then you need to build security into the business processes daily. And in that way, they will experience your value as security on a daily basis. And then of course, once the investment is made, you need to show it and report on it. A lot of times as security practitioners, we just go there and do our job and do it quietly. If there's no incident, everybody's happy, you're not gonna get a pet on your back because that's expected. But then you need to show it, report on it, show them you know, make the commitments to those KPIs and your posture improvement measurements need to be very clear for your organizations. So um, just in conclusion, uh, you know, if you look at from a, for, we've, we've been talking about an Africa response, uh, but my philosophy is that clean your house first. You know, make sure that you secure your own organizations first, and then once you do that, then you are able then to influence the wider community. Now, when we do partnerships with the different organizations, with government, then at least we know um, that we, 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 we know what we're talking about. Because you can't go out there and say you want to champion Africa cyber resilience when you have not even created cyber resilience for your own organization. So that's just my, my two pieces of advice. So you can see that now everywhere, ev digital, anything digital can be accessed everywhere. So as a result, increases our cybersecurity activities. So for, 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 from an Africa perspective, um, we are seeing that there's more and more activity coming out of Africa. So, and our, our issues really come from the fact that uh, um, we have lack of institutional maturity and weaknesses in our economic and social landscape. But that is changing, right? So we need to make sure that we we, we work as a team, one team, one fight. I've got one fight, one team, one team, one fight. And also create these partnerships that we've spoken about today to make sure that we are able to respond as Africa as one organization. I think that's it from my side today. Thank you so much.